Hello FTC Alberta and welcome to the next part of the Build Blitz. Now obviously we haven't done kickoff for Ultimate Goal yet, but we talked yesterday about, actually a couple days ago now, the uploads won't quite be in uh, in chronological order here and that's okay, but we actually talked about how to put together um, a drivetrain, the basics of CAD, a little bit about strategy on that, and uh, I sent the, sent the boys out with their uh, they're more beginners at CAD, and make sure that they were going to do the Tetrix, the basic bot, the one that you get in the uh, on the website, especially for your rookie teams. But for teams looking to go a little more advanced, I'm going to take that here with the Studica build and try to kind of convey some things that you should know about this piece. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to CAD a basic bot chassis. Uh, I'll say just a drivetrain. This is something I might use for a regular FTC team using the Studica kit. And I've laid it out in Fusion 360 here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the strategy that I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to click and drag parts and, again, the basics of uh, constraining them together. And when that is all said and done, I'm going to probably turn the audio off here. And then I'm going to take this video and speed it up so that you can watch the whole thing happen quickly. And if you want to slow pieces of it down, you're more than welcome to do so. This will be up excuse me, on YouTube, and so you can just change the speed settings, and life will be good from there. So what I've done is I've got my folder here, and this folder in Fusion has all the parts that I'm going to be using here, or that I think I'm going to be using. I recommend for teams to do this to actually upload your entire kit, everything you have into this folder, and life will be good from there. I don't have an entire Studica robotic system kit in here. I have the pieces that I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to do a full robot. And this is going to include um, basically mechanum wheels. This is going to include a control hub, an expansion hub. This is also going to include the battery. Um, and it's going to include all the mounting pieces so that once we figure out what the game is next week, we can actually build the pieces that we need. And that's going to allow us to actually put this together. And basically, we could have something before kickoff starts that we could base our robot off of. We might have to make some modifications when we get there, but there's nothing wrong with that. So that being said, uh, I'm going to use a very simple uh, straight shot motor to mechanic wheel set up here. And I know, and you'll see me do this occasionally, I've got my calculator over here. I was trained in the Imperial system, unfortunately, so I'm going to be doing some conversions here. I know that I've got 457 millimeters to play with in terms of my 18 inch by 18 inch width. So I'm actually going to start myself out here with clicking and dragging some parts into my file. Now you see that my file right now is untitled. I'm going to go file, I'm going to save just like we did before, go into my actual FTC Alberta build blitz, and I've named this one LaserBot because that's kind of cool. I'm going to name this LaserBot Master, and the master simply refers to the fact that all of my subsystems or sub uh, subparts are going to go into this one. Okay, and now that I've got one of these, I can actually see I can go back into the build blitz into the LaserBot. I'm actually going to make one new file. I just realized that I'm my master is going to uh, is eventually going to include the shooting mechanism intake, whatever it happens to be. Again, we're assuming that we're doing a shooting game here. I do actually need one more file because I realize now that I need to actually save this into the LaserBot folder as uh, we'll call it LaserBot Drive Base because that's what we're actually working on here. All right, now once we got this all started, I can go back to my part files. And since they're in the same project as that, um, these other files, the actual build files, I can actually work with them from there. And obviously I have my Tetrix parts there, so if I want them, and I'm just going to drag in a couple pieces just for the sake of measurement. I'm going to drag in a left wheel, I'm going to drag in a right wheel here in a second, and you'll notice that this is going to allow me to rotate this around 90 degrees, which I do need to do. Um, and then I'm going to go grab a right wheel, and I'm going to i take a guess at my width. I'm going to try to make a robot that's not a full 18 inches wide. I've never really been a fan of that necessarily. Um, I'm just going to move these wheels over, and I, I've calculated that out before at about 450 millimeters, so I'm just going to move it around that distance and just drop it over here. Okay, cool. I've got a couple wheels. They're not aligned. That's okay. Not the end of the world. And I'm just going to grab my channel because this is going to determine the width. And that is going to be, I believe, a 288 millimeter channel. Before I do that, I got to grab my motors and just make sure they will fit. Now, part of why you're catting this, why you're designing this robot this way, is because you're actually trying to figure out what the geometry behind all of this is, and that's kind of why we do a lot of this. Because we can see that this motor here is going to stick into this wheel, but realistically, when I click the inspect button, I've got a motor that's about 132 millimeters long. That means that if I've got two of them, 132 and 132, and I'm looking at the beams I have to use or I can use to build them, probably want to work in the neighborhood of, I actually might want to use the 336. So I'm just going to hit close. And again, there's nothing wrong with having more parts in here as it is and actually playing with them. 
and there we go, 336. Let's throw this in here. This is kind of what I imagined when I looked at the kit, and I actually determined kind of what I wanted, and I think I can fit two motors in there without trying too hard, so let's click the Maverick. Let's just move it over and make sure, and make sure my geometry works, because that's really what I'm doing here. I'm just confirming the geometry is correct, and it's something that I can actually work with. I just hit copy and paste there, and that's a hugely useful thing. And now that I look at this, I see that I wasn't even close. I shouldn't have been worried, and there's nothing wrong with that. Grab my Maverick, move it over here. All right, so now that I've got this, I'm gonna actually stop this video here. I'm actually gonna start just recording my CAD, and I'm gonna speed it up. So if you need to slow anything down as to what I do, if I really need to stop anything, we will stop it, and I will walk you through how to do those pieces. But this whole build is gonna be using the Studica kit, uh, potentially a couple of random parts like churros that I really like using, uh, as well as uh, perhaps some quarter inch thick acrylic or plywood to do some, base, some pieces, uh, some skirt pieces to keep game pieces from getting into the frame, which is sometimes a problem in FTC. Without further ado, welcome to the rest of this CAD.
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed watching that CAD and watching this whole project come together. You'll notice that I've made a few parts here that are non-standard, including all the white parts you see here. And that's just because I have access to a laser cutter, and I know many teams do, and so that's something that you absolutely can do. This is made to quarter inch, it could be plywood, we've done this very effectively in the past with some of the teams. Uh, it could also be ABS plastic, stuff stinks up your laser cutter man in a <laughs> wonderful way, but it's not a bad way to build something. And you notice there was one problem if you're watching the whole video all the way through that I uh, realized right Right at the end and it was from my design piece and this is why you do the cat uh, you'll notice that this robot is about just short of 500 millimeters wide and I'm doing my best to shift over from uh, from Imperial to metric on this and you'll notice that in doing so when we actually clear this out and realize it's 497 we realize that this is it's about an inch and a half too wide I need to trim about 40 millimeters off of this thing and I'm gonna go do that on go do that on my own and actually just uh, shrink the thing down in a couple of dimensions and actually make it uh, make it a little more functional in this sense that being said I do hope you learned something from this I used a few non-standard parts again in the sense of these cut pieces you could use your own spacers and you probably don't need side pieces I'm also designing this as a demonstration robot and so you'll see that these are actually uh, churros from F RC and I mean these are relatively easy to get and cut and tap throw some quarter inch bolts in those are really easy um, but that being said um, you can see that this is actually all set up and ready to go for actually doing an FTC season it's got its battery its rev hub its expansion hub it's got a plate down here on the front which is meant to be an actual piece for the intake we could drill holes in this we could add stuff to it and it's nice and low to the ground so we could actually do a pickup from the floor which is gonna probably be important if there is a game that involves shooting it has in all of the shooting first games in the past so let's assume here you'll also notice that I did a uh, battery bracket here and the battery bracket is very simply so that I can I hold this in place and also um, this uh, th this exists to keep the battery so that I could move it back and forth up the, and down the robot if I needed to. The reason for that is mechanisms really like to be balanced. Right now I've got a whole bunch of stuff including a big plate hanging off the front or back depending on how you look at it end of the robot and that basically means that this uh, bat robot is going to have a lot of weight on these mechanism wheels which means we want to put the battery as far back as we can to balance that out. Now Clearly, once there's an intake mechanism and or a shooter on this, we'll have to readdress where the center of gravity is and potentially move the battery again. And that's just a piece of the process. You want to be able to move that as a, as a counterbalance to keep your mechanism straight. That being said, kickoff's in about a week here as I'm recording this, and I'm not sure when this video will get published, but uh, I look forward to kickoff and I look forward to throwing an actual game playing mechanism on top of this robot that we just designed and put in CAD here because at the end of it all we're going to actually manufacture these pieces of wood we're going to hand get them in the hands of some students and or some mentors and actually have them assemble this robot because that's what the build blitz is all about walking you through the process any questions toss them on discord the discord link is in the bottom of this uh, page we have a little bit of an FTC Alberta discord going on where we can answer any questions there are mentors on there there are students on there who are very interested in the upcoming ultimate goal season all right without further ado see you next time and uh, go be game changers